So does that mean they're losing or does that mean they're winning? I think it means they're losing. Yeah, that they're losing individually to Grodno because they haven't been able to push forth, I guess. They have 116,000 men under arms. Where on this list is Poland? Poland still has 32,000. Poland seems to be doing okay. Ah, the Reformation branches out. The Protestant Reformation is spreading like wildfire across Europe. Several different movements have already formed, proposing alternative ways of reforming the Christian faith. A devout preacher in Braslaw has become the principal figure for the so-called reformed school of thought, stressing the complete ruin of humanity's ethical nature. Only with the divine intervention of God can humanity find salvation, turning from rebellion to willing obedience. Does that mean you went reformed? No, you're, you're Protestant. Hmm. I'm confused. They are warned by Russia. Russia will declare war upon Lithuania if they start a war against a third party. I'm sure that, you know, Russia thought long and hard about that and went, you know, these guys, they're going to be real troublemakers. Mm-hmm. Yes, they are. So we are making a bunch of money. I'm considering firing our... Yeah, you know what? I'm going to fire Simon. Simon doesn't need to be hired right now. Simon can go away. So Manila is, I believe, still a province. Yeah, it is a province. Can we just go straight there? I would assume so. Uh, we'll give that to the administration. I would assume that if we know where it is, we don't need a navigator to get through there, but we might. Um, a navigator. I did it again. An explorer, I mean. We may. But I think we can probably figure out how to do that. I'm also thinking that it might be time to beat up... Ooh, hey. Lost ferocity. I like losing ferocity. This is popping up quicker than I expected. I set it to fire off every 15 years. I guess, you know, dice rolls. And we gain a diplomatic insult castle's ballet on the Timurids. Well, yeah, I'll take it. I'm considering perhaps attacking these guys and setting up some protectorates. So I'm going to begin fabricating a claim on Madurai. Yes. And we've converted some heretics. Good. Is it heresy? Absolutely. Don't be heretical. And we'll station a guy there. So hang on. How long? How much do they have? They've got negative 10%. Once that religious zeal goes away, it shouldn't be too bad. Uzbek received a gift from the Timurids. I'm guessing that's because they want to start incorporating them when they can. Ooh, hello. Russia is suffering very badly if they've got zealots rising. I mean, I don't want to see Russia conquered. I don't want to see Russia split up into lots and lots of little bits. But I do want to see them brought down just a little bit. Because they're getting very big and they're getting very scary. Funge. Really? I... Oh. No, I don't have a... I don't have a claim in it. It's just... I know about it. Tropical wood to be produced in the S. I like that. That sounds like a good plan. Ah, cultural ties. I like cultural ties. This reduces the amount of culture... Of a certain culture you need before it becomes accepted in your empire. And because we have so many Mongols left over from the Crusader 2... Crusader Kings 2 game... English... Uh, that would be really, really helpful for us because Germans and French groups are currently accepted, but there's a ton of Mongolians around this area, and actually, if we go into here, you can you can see it. There's a ton of Mongolians. Well, there's not as many Mongolians anymore, but there's enough that they're a significant minority, and there's some even in Europe itself. There's Italians as well, which should get accepted. Some of these cultures will just never be accepted because there's not that many of them, but I'm hoping that Mongol will make it a little bit easier. Mongolians are in a lot of places. So, oh, I clicked off the thing. I'm a fool. Different cultures have different customs, and for some reason tend to resist attempts from above to change said customs. We can turn this weakness into a strength by incorporating the local leaders into our system of government and having them carry out our will in a way that is palatable to them. Good news. 
and a harvest failure. Not so good news. That is damned unfortunate. There we go, a culture accepted. My Imperatrix, our subjects who embrace Mongol. <laughs> I love how it says it like that, as opposed to embrace the Mongol culture, have finally been able to prove their loyalty. So we are now accepting Mongol as an integral part of our nation. Their language and culture are a part of our national heritage. Hooray! So finally, if we click on this, look, there's all those little spots of green. This pleases me. So let's actually see. And grain will be produced in that other place we colonized. Good. Let us see how we're doing on that. So if a culture is at least 4% of our cause, then it will become accepted. If a culture is below 2%, then it will no longer be an accepted culture. 4%? That seems awfully low. I would have thought that it would go to something like 10. That's really good though. So, hang on. Yeah, some cultures will just never become part of our part of our um our empire's national heritage. The Italians and Greeks are probably closest. So, I suppose if we got rid of Bretons and Castilians and Berbers and all those other cultures, we might have a chance of making the remaining ones actually be accepted, but we'll, we won't worry about that too much. And we can invest in a new idea, which is serfdom, but before we do that, we got our claim, which is good, and improved, an improved reputation as well. With the hard work of our diplomats, we have toiled night and day, and our reputation is improved. The world looks upon us with favor. All glory to us. Extra diplomatic relation is always good. Uh, reputation, rather, sorry. This will unlock the serfdom idea for 400 military power. I like this plan. A foot soldier in the army is not quite the career that anyone wanted, what with the poor food, low pay, and virtually non-existent medical services. If we were to tie our peasants to the land, we would know exactly where to look for, for recruits. Uh, so that gives us extra national manpower. Not a really big idea. I kind of like this one. Noble officers is really nice, and international nobility gets you an extra diplomat, which is awesome. And the military traditions... Military traditions is really, really good, because if you grab that, then you don't have to worry too much about uh, your technology. So did they, did they just get out of the war? They did. What did they take? Did they take anything? I think they took something from... Gotland, actually. Did they? Did this used to belong to Gotland? No. Oh. Did they integrate the army? I can't recall. The national borders look like they changed, though. I don't know. It's not a really big guide. It's not a really big deal, I suppose, but that is interesting to me. So, these places are now cores, which is all good. And we can increase our technology in diplomatic... What does that actually get us? A naval base and a customs house. Um, sure, why not? Let's go with that. So we won't be doing diplomatic tech for a long while, but something we can do is we can build ourselves a legion. So if we click here, will it build all of them? Okay, good. It'll it'll build all of them on this on Salon. It won't worry too much about where they come from. All right, well, we'll we'll reinforce this particular legion, and then we'll split off the third one to be uh, a force of its own, and then we will go and beat the snot out of these guys. Because I do want to weaken, I do want to weaken the Indian continent a little bit. I want to have some uh, some power here. I don't particularly want to have. Aha! Uh -huh, there's another one of those events. I don't particularly want to have a big. Indian colonization thing going on here. I'm happy with just having Salon under my direct rule, but with that whole indirect rule thing, I would like to release a few nations down here and perhaps guarantee their independence. So we got the occupation of Rome deemed legitimate. So I figured that, you know, it makes sense that there's a, there is a penalty for being a Catholic who controls Rome. That makes sense. But surely after a couple of hundred years of controlling Rome, that should wear off right? I mean, if the Pope still exists, and according to the game he does, although he seems to be some kind of vampire because he never actually dies, he just gets re-elected as Eugenius IV. But anyway, it occurs to me that after a certain point, 
it wouldn't really matter what he thought as an individual, so long as other countries accepted that you controlled Rome and that that was the way things should be. So, I couldn't remove the penalty for the Christian occupation of Rome, I couldn't figure out how to code that, so I just created a new thing, which gives us 2 reputation and 6.5 yearly papal influence. That'll only put us up to about 1 influence a year, so it's not something that's ridiculously overpowered. It's just a little boost, so we don't get a complete negative from it. I figure it's okay. I'm, you know, it's about, it's a flavor event anyway. So long may the city remain safely in Roman hands. Hooray. So we'll gain a little bit of papal influence, but not very much, and we'll probably still never win. I just figured that it made more sense than having, you know, a, a constant penalty. Now I'm going to split off the galleys in this particular navy because the Indian fleet is going to have to go and patrol. I said the Indian fleet is going to have to go and patrol. Nobles demand privileges, do they? Accept their rightful claims for minus 10 prestige or ignore their demands. I'm going to ignore their demands. I care not what you say. And I want you guys to patrol up and down the coast. I want you to patrol over to here and back again, and then make a loop. There you go. Patrol forth. Our navy should be able to win if they uh, if they attack us when we finally go to war with them. So let's see. Japan likes us a lot. Oh, hello. The Council of Oslo, you say. His Holiness the Pope has tasked a commission of cardinals with addressing the challenges posed by the Protestant movement. Ah, so this is our version, our universe's version of the Council of Trent. While the Catholic faith itself must not be compromised, His Holiness and most cardinals are willing to admit that some Protestant complaints are valid. Therefore, the Council advises many changes to the administration of the Church to stop absentee bishops and the worldly accesses of the clergy. In addition, several new monastic orders are to be founded to aid in the efforts of the Counter Reformation. So, if we were a uh, if we were a Christian nation who did not have ecumenism, we would be potentially able to host that council because we control Trent. Um, we don't, so it became the Council of Oslo, and we cannot embrace the Counter Reformation because we've already gone ahead and been tolerant. So that's a slight problem if we were faced with a, a, a wild rampant heresy, but we're not, so it's not a big deal. Um, what did I want from this? I wanted to have a look and see how old you were, for starters. You're 35. That's not too bad. Yeah, it's not too bad. Bohemia University. We are going to throw that into admin power, because I would really, really like to finish this off as soon as I can. So better relations over time, you say. I like that idea. Our nation is a bastion of tolerance and enlightenment. By ensuring that all other nations know this, we can foster better relations abroad. Hooray. I like that despite the fact that we're essentially an autocracy, they still think somehow that we are enlightened and free. This pleases me at the same time as I find it absolutely hilarious. So how are... How is everybody doing? Manchu got its ass handed to it. Mongolia has become big. Mongolia has vassals. Really? Mongolia looks to be shaping up to be a power in the region. Although I'm sure that will probably end once, um, once... Hang on a minute, what? Why did my other diplomat come home? I do not know. What was he doing? Oh, oh, snap, you went out of being a, uh, oh dear, you went out of being elected, but our guy is actually in line next, so, okay, <laughs> alright, I could go with that, that's fine. I was really confused, I was like, what, what, where did he go, what was he doing, who was he making friends with? Um, you can go back, no, that's not what I wanted, you can go back to improving relations with our lesser union partner, and, uh, I guess we don't really need to worry about making friends with 
Poland because we helped them a lot and we still have the same dynasty after the election, so we can leave them to it. And we can apparently have another aristocratic idea. How far behind are we on military tech? Uh, 594. Are they ahead of us? No. Are they ahead of us? No. Okay, let's grab this then. Noble officers. I am pleased by this. Who leads our troops is an important choice, and nobility is seeking to ensure their preference is given to them. It will give them a chance to show their valor by giving the enemy cold steel, and we will allow them to do this. Land leader shot goes up by plus one. This is a really, really good ability. I do not mind it in the slightest. But the next one is the one that I really want, because extra diplomats are good. Um, well, we can go back to making Palotsk like us, I guess. And we will continue improving uh, relations with Denmark, even though we don't really have to. How likely is it that we inherit them, actually? 43%. Why did that go up so high? Our diplomatic reputation. Oh, right, because we have a couple of modifiers now that will really, really help with that. Mm. I wouldn't mind inheriting them, because I plan on letting them go. I plan on giving them their independence and maybe running them as a vassal state, or just you know, cutting them off entirely and releasing them as a sub-state, because once you, once you release a vassal, if you inherited them through personal union, or it, any vassal actually, if you release them as a, as a nation, uh, really, Poland, it's not very nice, this has to build it back up again, good news everyone, um, if you release a nation as a, as a vassal, so by doing this if you go to view your country and then create subjects if you do that then you um you will install a member of your dynasty on the throne so it's not that bad of an idea i might do it maybe i don't know yet how far have you got to go the development of iron working in ghana really well done ghana how many units do you have one more in the queue well that's okay then That's not bad at all. I'm wondering if it might not be better to just uh, name, like keep this legion all together. I think I might, actually. I might throw a couple of units this way, just so they have numbers for when we go and siege things. But I think I'll just leave it mainly as it is. So let's see. What do we want to build? Because we should really start building buildings again. Let's see about trade, actually. A colony has become self-sustaining. Good news. Let's see about trade. A post office and the customs house. We can't get the customs house because we don't have anywhere with the post office. So let's build post office -y things. Build all of the post offices. I like post offices. I like trains. Um, actually, hang on. No, that's fine. I didn't want to upgrade um, one of our places. I didn't want to upgrade Normandy or Picardy or Calais by accident because I want to put our Admiralty in one of those places. I haven't really decided which one it's going to be. I'm thinking Calais because Calais kind of makes some sense. Um, let's see. Alexandria, you totally need to be upgraded. So do you. Is there anywhere else? According to this, yes. Oh, there we go. There's still somewhere else. Where? No. Really? Where? The province may only have buildings of one category. Yeah, I, I got that. Oh, a post office in Kaffa. Where's Kaffa? Is Kaffa up here? Yeah, there it is. I found you. Yes, I did. He upgraded. Boom. Alrighty. So how are we going on this whole legion thing? Chamber demi cannon. Ooh, hello. Religious uproar. According to the governor of Weistruck, the citizens are in uproar because of our missionary's complete lack of respect for any religious practices or traditions different from their own. He's asking us to consider cancelling all further missionary activities in the area or at least send some more troops until things calm down. Send in some troops, get a Mauritian infantry, but also 10 
unrest. It is not of much importance. You know what? Nine heretic regiments is not bad. I will totally go with that. And it's unlikely that they will rise anyway. But if they do, we will go and crush them. With our superior forces. So let's have a look here. Grodno has announced Russia as their new rival. You know, I am sure that they are terrified. They are shaking in their boots. And Poland... Oh! Really? Imram died. That's a shame. Uh, not a big deal, though. It's always possible that due to our royal marriages, we will eventually gain control of the country. How many troops do you have? You really need more infantry than anything else. You... Alright, let's send them three units of infantry, one unit of cavalry, and one unit of artillery. There we go, that should make them happier. And we will name this particular legion, which is what? 28? Number 29, so... 29? Oops. Legio 29, Salon. And on that note, I'm going to take a quick break before we come back and we declare war on the Anagar. I, I can never pronounce them. The yellow guys in India before we declare war on them. So until then, this is me, Greyhunter, saying thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.